Good morning, and welcome to morning prayer from Washington National Cathedral. I'm Father Spencer. I'm the Congregation Priest Associate here at the Cathedral, and I'm so grateful that you find us wherever you might be in the world, in time, or in your place. As we begin this morning on this Monday, November 4th, I invite you to find a space where you feel grounded, that even for a moment, your feet firmly planted, and your shoulders and your heart and your mind unburdened, that we might offer these things to God. Offer them to God with words aloud. Offer them to God in silence and in breath. We're offering to God without words, for God alone knows what is on our hearts. So let us invite the Spirit and take a deep breath together. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we continue to pray, offering to God those things on our hearts, our worries, our concerns, our thanksgivings, and our joys. Let us join together in the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together Psalm 131. O Lord, I am not proud. I have no haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters or with things that are too hard for me. But I still my soul and make it quiet, like a child upon its mother's breast. My soul is quieted within me. O Israel, wait upon the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Let us hear from the Gospel of Luke. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid in the resurrection of the righteous. Here ends the lesson. What a beautiful lesson we have today. After this season of Halloween where we offer candy to our friends and neighbors and kiddos, and after celebrating all souls and all saints, I can't help but think of all of the activities of growing up, of all of those fall festivals and Halloween parties and costume parties and wonderful pumpkin carving contests and apple picking and apple dunking, of course. But growing up, there was a rule. If you were to have a party, you invited everyone from your class. So everyone from my first grade class was invited to this Halloween party. There were no exceptions. No one was expected to bring anything. No one was expected to dress in a certain way, aside from let's have fun and spend time together before this great festival of candy. It's these small lessons that we take away from our gospel that are even bigger and make more of an impact for us now than we could ever imagine. When you have a banquet, 
you offer to those who come all that you have, the best of what you have. You offer the best food, the best drink, the best seating, the most comfort that you possibly can to those who would never be invited in the first place. In our gospel, it said that you are to invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind because they could never repay you. But there's more. You offer a seat at the banquet to those with whom you disagree, those who you might hate or hate you. You offer that to those who might be considered enemies, to those who would never even know your name. The greatest gift we have is hospitality. The greatest gift we have is a welcome beyond our understanding. Because really, we are not the host of the party. The host is the one who gives the heavenly banquet, Christ Jesus. And we do our best to follow him in every way not just today, not just tomorrow, but in our whole lives. And it won't be easy. As we are the day before we hold our national election in this country, it can be difficult to imagine a table with room for all of us when we have such divisive language and ideas, when we speak of others as less than, that the host of the table who sits at the head has not simply made a table big enough for everyone, but has already put out an invite calling every single person and part of creation beloved. And so as we pray today and pray tomorrow and the next day that we might host such a banquet and never be repaid, let us pray now this prayer for an election on this eve and day before. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives, that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And thanks be to God that we know where the banquet lies and that we follow the host now and always. Amen.